I wanted to start off by saying I'm so sorry that I was not able to keep my word. I know in my last video, the About Me video, I had said that I was going to have some special guests on and they were going to show you some of their recipes that they're comfortable with cooking, but there has been a change of plans. Not everyone is comfortable with being on YouTube, so I get it. I didn't want to force anyone to do something that they wasn't completely comfortable with doing. Because you're at Simmer Down, don't worry, honey. I am going to show you some meatloaf that is nice and juicy. Now, the thing about meatloaf is that it's not everyone's favorite. Some people like meatloaf with brown gravy. Some people like meatloaf with uh, like a tomato base on the top. For me, I like my meatloaf tomato based. I like to have tomato base throughout the whole topping of the meatloaf. Do not hand me over brown gravy to drizzle on my meatloaf. No ma'am, no sir. This meatloaf is going to be moist. It's going to be together, so it's not gonna be falling apart when you cut into it. We want that meatloaf to be like in every bite, it's just moist. I'm going to wash my hands and we're going to get started. Stay tuned. of ground turkey meat um, you can use any type of ground turkey meat that you like but this is the the ground turkey meat that I'm using which is butterball lean butterball three pounds of ground lean turkey meat what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by putting some multi-colored sweet mini peppers so we have red yellow and then it's like a brownish tint pepper I actually saved one so you can see what I what I'm talking about and this is a sweet pepper it's not spicy or anything you can use any type of peppers you want if you want green peppers in there um, you can use that normally I would use the green peppers but I didn't have it so I'm using this but either one is fine as long as it's sweet I have seven mini multicolored sweet peppers not too not too big if you cut them too big it's going to be hard to create a loaf all right the smaller the peppers the better and here I have finely finely chopped red onions I used about um, one and a half medium red onions now here I have uh, diced tomatoes fire roasted tomatoes so you can use just regular diced tomatoes that's fine um, but I'm just gonna use this one today and it's by Hunt's all right fire roasted diced garlic tomatoes I there was some juice in there I actually strained some out but it, it did create some more juice and that's fine but don't don't make sure you don't put too much juice in there because the more juicy it is it's gonna be hard to create a loaf actually half of this can so it's about 12 ounces that I used of the fire roasted tomatoes we have one large egg that I'm going to put in here as well this is how it's looking so far so now we're going to use one cup of Ritz crackers crushed you can use whatever crackers you like if you have whole wheat crackers or just regular saltine crackers that's fine it's one cup now a cup of crackers I would say was like about six to eight crackers that I crushed up, okay? Here I have six cloves of garlic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my Ninja blender and I'm going to make like a little liquid sauce for it. Because that liquid sauce is going to run throughout the whole 
um, ground meat and that's what I want. I want the flavors to be throughout the whole meatloaf. I'm going to be using a single serve button on this blender because I have just six cloves. I'm going to put it in my smoothie container. All right, and then I'm going to put the blade, you know, on there and we're gonna blend it. So these are the six cloves that I'm going to put in the blender. All right, right here in the little ninja cup. And now I'm going to take about a tablespoon of water just to make it easy to blend. All right, so I got a little bit of water in here, about a tablespoon and six cloves of garlic. Put the power on first. And then I'm going to press the single serve button. And I'm going to now put this in the ground turkey. All right, so six cloves of garlic and about two to three tablespoons of water just to make it easy to move around in the blender. Okay guys, so here is the garlic that I blended up, the six garlic cloves with two to three tablespoons of water. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to just pour this over the meat and veggies. Make sure you get a spoon and scoop every bit out because this is going to be flavor. Now I have everything in there from the, the crushed garlic, um, onions, peppers, tomatoes, egg, breadcrumbs, right? I'm going to take my time and I'm going to mix this all in. Let it fellowship, okay? So let's go from the bottom to the top. The good thing about meatloaf is like, this is a good leftover. Like, I'm not a fan of leftover food, but meatloaf, it tastes even better the next day. Just think about it. Everything that you put in this meatloaf is going to marinate in the fridge overnight. And it's going to taste even better the next day. And when I eat meatloaf, I have to have it with mashed potatoes. But you can have it however you like. All right? So, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm like getting the sides, flipping it from the bottom to the top. You just let all of that natural seasonings work its magic. You're gonna have a party in your mouth. My oven is being preheated on 375 degrees while we're waiting for the oven to reach 375 degrees. We're going to take this ground turkey meat and we're going to turn it into a loaf. I actually seasoned the ground turkey meat for the turkey meatloaf with some garlic powder all right i used about i say about a tablespoon of garlic powder about start off with a teaspoon of salt a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper and about a tablespoon of onion powder so this is what i use to season it with i thought my my camera was recording but it wasn't so i just want you guys to know this is part of the ingredients that i used in my ground turkey meat it's a very small pan it may look big on video but this pan i'm going to use to create a loaf you see it has like that oval shape and that's what we need if you don't have an oval shaped pan you can actually just form your meatloaf into an oval shape okay this ground meat in here all right just place it all in this pan and then you're gonna form your loaf so I'm gonna take it tuck around the edges start off with the edge first tucking it in And you're gonna pat it down on the top. I don't know if you've ever been to, well, we call it in New York City, a bodega. In a bodega, they have like a deli case where they keep cold cut meat. And the cold cut meat sometimes is shaped just like this. 
So if you want like turkey hero sandwiches, prior to them cutting it, it's like shaped like this in the beginning. And that's, that's the look we want. We want it to be shaped like a loaf. It may not be the perfect loaf, but that's fine. Nothing's going to be perfect. Don't freak out and be like, oh my gosh, my loaf is round. That's okay, because even the loaf that I'm making right now may not be perfect. And because the holidays is coming, yeah, I think you guys should make this for the holidays. Surprise your family. If you've never made meatloaf before, make it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and watch them go crazy. Look at that. So that's perfect to me. Cover it with this lid, all right? We're going to put it in the oven, I would say for about an hour and 20 minutes. But in between that hour and 20 minutes, the tomato sauce and the ketchup is what I'm going to put on this loaf in between the hour and 20 minutes, all right? Like I told you before, we have the tomato paste, original. It's, uh, if you wanna use low sodium tomato paste, that's fine. Um, I'm just gonna use original, no flavor to it, no oregano, garlic paste, none of that. It's just straight up tomato paste. I have some ketchup here, um, two tablespoons of ketchup. The tomato paste that I'm using is six ounces. It's just a regular size tomato paste, six ounces, which is the smaller version of tomato paste. I'm going to use this spoon to combine them both together. Okay. Now that I have the ketchup and the tomato paste together, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to slowly mix this in. Mix it in very well. Once you mix this all in with the ketchup, the tomato paste is going to loosen up a little bit. And it's gonna make it easier to spread onto the loaf. You guys can see that? And then once you have it mixed in very well, you can just have it sit here, cover it, and just wait for the loaf to be halfway done. And then we're gonna put it on top. I wanna also let you guys know that once I mix the ketchup up with the tomato paste, it loosened it up, but it's not so liquidy. It's still pasty, like it's hard to move around. We wanna make sure that it stay still pasty because that's what we need to keep this, this sauce, this sauce on top of the meatloaf. If it's too watery, it's going to run down and it's just going to be sitting in the bottom of the pan. We want this paste to stay on top of the meatloaf. And if we wanna put it on the, around the edges of the meatloaf, we still want it to be able to stick to the meatloaf and not run down. All right, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so it's at its halfway mark. And I don't know if you guys can see the juices that's in this pan. We're going to take like half of that out because we still want it to be juices in there, but not, not too much. So when we put the topping on there, the juices is like probably gonna stop it from sticking. So we're gonna take some of that out that's at the very bottom, okay? Stay tuned. All right, so we have some in there. I don't know if you can see it running a little bit down in the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to take the tomato paste that we mixed together with the ketchup and we're going to smooth it on there. Okay, so now we're going to take this tomato paste and smooth it on to the, the loaf with a spoon. Make sure you have a big spoon to spread on the meatloaf. We're just gonna just spread it like, like as if we're putting mayo or on a sandwich or um, peanut butter, you know? Just, just spread it just nice and smoothly on, okay? You don't want one side to have more tomato paste than the other side. And you make sure you go around the edges of the loaf. So when you do cut the loaf, every angle has tomato paste on it. And make sure it's thick enough where it's like not too thick and not too, you know, thinly layered. We want it to be like a nice coating on top and on the side. All right, so now that we're done, we're going to put this meatloaf back into the oven on 375 degrees for 40 minutes. We're going to make sure that the lid is not on it. 
When we cooked it before, we had the lid on it. But we're going to take the lid off and we're going to let it stay in the oven for 40 minutes without the lid. All right, stay tuned. If you remember very well, we took some juices out and it's still some juices at the bottom of the pan, which lets us know that this meatloaf is still moist. We're going to let it just sit for 10 minutes and then we're going to plate it and I'm going to cut it for you guys so you guys can see how juicy the inside is. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to cut into this meatloaf. All right, so you guys can see. the meatloaf if you look very well I'm squeezing down the meatloaf I don't know if you can see the juices running out of it it is extremely moist look at that juice thank you guys thank you for joining me today at simmer down I hope this recipe that I shared with you guys is everything that you were looking for going forward if you comment on my page, I'm going to start shouting people out and I'm going to start showing you love. I hope you guys get a chance to create the meals and recipes that I have shared with you guys and take the time, take a picture of it, videotape it, um, whatever, you, whatever you feel comfortable with doing and just forward it to my Instagram page, which is simmer.down1, S-I-M-M-E-R dot down d-o-w-n one the number one i'm going to collect it all and i'm going to do a video and it's basically going to sh just be my way of saying thank you because you guys don't have to subscribe and don't have to follow me on instagram or tiktok and i just appreciate the fact that you're you're taking the time out to let me know that i'm not just talking to myself so going forward like i said comment i'm going to screenshot the comments and i'm going to shout you out i just think it's it's time to like show you guys love well i guess that's the end of the show i thank you guys for taking this time out to to view my channel i thank you for subscribing if you didn't subscribe please right now click the subscribe button click the notification bell to notify you when i have a video out Thank you for coming to Simmer Down. I hope to see you guys again. To all my new subscribers out there, thank you again for taking the time out to subscribe. I can't wait to see you guys again. Take care and have a good day.